Now, this is a situation we must address ourselves to with some kind of decorum and foresight. J.R. here tells me that Huey moved the deduct box and don't know where it is. What's the deduct box? It's our campaign funds, Gerald. Ever since Huey became governor, certain state employees have deducted 10% of their salaries to contribute to certain campaigns. Therefore, deduct box. Voluntarily contributed? How much? Well, I guess only Huey knows exactly, but I'd say it's about a million. A million dollars? It's not script, Gerald. And only Huey knows where it is. It was in a safe deposit box in his hotel in Washington. But Huey got mad at the hotel and moved and took the box with him. Where did he put it? Oscar, if we knew, we wouldn't be having this meeting. Now, we must face the difficult but necessary fact that Huey may not recover from this dastardly assassin's bullet. And we may conceivably have to face the additional fact that we have no funds to man an anti-assassination campaign. Shot Weiss, weren't you? One of them. Uh, how about I buy a cup of coffee? Maybe you can tell me what happened. Why don't you buy me a drink? I'll tell you everything. The senator, you know, was inexhaustible. He'd go all day and all night. Run. I was trained to try to anticipate his moves so as to be ahead of him, but that wasn't possible much of the time. Anyway, this man in a white suit walked toward us. He held his hat over the gun. When he pulled out the gun, I, I grabbed his gun hand like this, but he but was already squeezing the trigger. The ejector slide on the gun bruised my wrist. Did you ever see Weiss before? Never. What did he look like? Kind of an average looking guy, thin. Wore round glasses, thick, thick round glasses. The gun was a 32 caliber automatic Browning. How many shots did he get off? Two. I got an arm around his neck and pulled him to the floor. He got off another shot as we fell, shot off my wristwatch. Anyway, as we were falling, I, I pulled my pistol, 38 Special on a 45 frame, had it uh, under his chin. I fired one shot into his throat. I, I guess that killed him. Anyway, after that, I got the hell away from him because by then, everybody was shooting. Like the furnace of hell. Smoke, powder. I was blind. I couldn't see for the muzzle blast of the other guns. I couldn't hear for the guns going off near my head. They were so loud and so close, the powder burned my clothes. Burned my skin right through my clothes. I tell you, I was lucky to stumble out of there alive for the shooting of our old men. Somebody said, uh... Weiss never got off a shot. Said you bodyguards saw his gun, started firing in panic. It was one of your bullets that shot Huey. It's a damn vicious lie. Hey, wait a minute. I, I, I was just telling you what I heard. That's a damn vicious lie. Hell, we were all carrying 45s with hollow point ammo. You know what kind of holes they make in a man? Hell, if one of our bullets had shot Huey, he'd never made it to the hospital. Why campaign in Arkansas? For Hattie Carraway? Mrs. Carraway has worked with me in the Senate since her husband's death. She deserves election on her own right. But the entire Democratic Party in Arkansas is against it. Now, why did Huey Long suddenly decide to champion a born loser? Well, I don't think she's a loser. Sure, she's a poor widow woman. She's got no money. The party machine is against her. The press is against her. She's a progressive running in a conservative state. She's not dynamic. 
She's not a good speaker, but she's gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> this is because Huey Long is going on the stump for it. Mm. This is the condition. North, east, south, west. With wealth concentrating, the classes becoming defined. This is the problem that the good people of this country must consider. manages to get Hattie Carraway elected. And he will. Democrats are going to have to start taking you seriously as a national figure, not just in Louisiana. A threat, I suppose. Roosevelt, power, prestige. Roosevelt. My friends, and you are my friends. <laughs> <laughs> King Franklin the first. Now, you take Mr. Roosevelt and Mr. Hoover. When I was a cuddling salesman up in northern Louisiana, there was a peddler of two patent medicines, high papa Hiram and low papa Hiram. Now, these medicines were made from the bark of the same tree. But for one, the peddler peeled the bark off from the top down. And for the other, he peeled it off from the bottom up. <laughs> That's the way it is in Washington. Yes. Right now, Mr. Roosevelt and his crowd are skinning us from the ear down, while Hoover and the Republicans are doing the job from the ankle up. <laughs> but they're both skinning us. And if Mr. Roosevelt and Mr. Hoover are the nominees for the major parties next year, or anyone who looks like Roosevelt or Hoover, we're gonna have us another candidate in 36. Yeah! Everybody gather around. Loosen up your suspenders, hunker down on the ground. I'm a cracker, you want to. Don't I take good care of you? Who built the highway to Baton Rouge? His back looked like a punch board with all the numbers punched out. I went down, leaned close, and looked at him. Not to see if he was dead, because there could be no doubt about that. Look, there's one thing I still don't see understand. How are you? Murphy? No. Hey, look, wait a minute. Murphy? What's the word? He's doing fine. Were you there when it happened? Somebody said you all put 61 bullets into Weiss in five seconds. Is that right? People running for their lives, children screaming, bullets ricocheting all over the rotunda. All of you firing at Weiss, all at once, point blank range. Noise and powder smoke and marble dust, blanking everything out. Were you there? We weren't there. Were you there? We weren't there. Who was? What's that? We're just giving you some help breathing, Senator. Don't need no help. You'll find it easier, Senator. Where is everybody? They're all here, Senator. Just relax now. Can't relax. Go to the now. You rich men. Weave and howl for your miseries 
that should come upon you. <sighs> Wherefore, ye shall do my judgments. And keep my statutes. And do them. Yeah. He isn't dead. They haven't been able to stop the bleeding at the kidney. They say he can't withstand another operation. So he's going to die. If the hemorrhaging stops spontaneously. You mean a miracle? It can happen, Miss Rose. much of a chance to know him. Public man come home for weekends. They go for a drive. I remember that. We'd drive out to a bridge he was building or inspect a highway his administration was going to build. Roads and bridges. They're his children. I'm proud of him, Mother. He was only 42. Transcript of a record of a conference held in the DeSoto Hotel in New Orleans by congressman representing Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the first, the last, and the littlest. A dictograph was planted in the meeting room, and Herbert Christenberry, an attorney and brother of my personal secretary, and the secretary of the Louisiana Senate overheard the following and certified this transcript of the record. Now, here's what happened among the congressmen representing Roosevelt the Little himself. Conference, July 22nd, 1935. Room 506, DeSoto Hotel, 10, 10 a.m. I want senators to get this. Voice, I would draw in a lottery to go out and kill Long. It would take one man, one gun, and one bullet. Voice, I haven't the slightest doubt that Roosevelt would pardon anyone who killed Long. <laughs> This gets even funnier. I want senators to hear this succeeding line. I read the language after midnight when I was alone in my room, and I got a little bit more shaky. But it is funny in the daylight. I will read that last line again. Boys, I haven't the slightest doubt but that Roosevelt would pardon anyone who killed Long. Boys. But how could it be done? Voice, the best way 
would be to just hang around Washington and kill him right in the Senate. <laughs> Now here is where I get a lease on life. Here is something to show senators where something comes in and gives me a break. Voice. I once thought that would be necessary, but I don't think it is now. So, it seems like temporarily, I got a respite on the matter. <laughs> I did not say Roosevelt was plotting to kill me. I said this was a slate of candidates backed by the present administration. Now, don't you go accusing the president of the United States of plotting murder. The press hasn't sunk that low. Oh, come on now, Huey. You don't really believe your life is in danger, do you? Oh, no. Now, you listen to me. This administration has sent down culprits and thieves and thugs who openly advocate murder. This is the kind of government which this administration has attached itself in the state of Louisiana. What kind of proof of that do you want? My dead body? Joey? What? This one bill you want me to draw up, the one that provides for a mandatory fine and jail sentence for anyone that violates Louisiana's reserve rights? Yeah. I, I think it's unconstitutional. Grab the damn bill. Huey, some of our boys in St. Landry Parish are finding it increasingly difficult to live with Judge Poppy. They want you to redistrict St. Landry. Poppy, who are you bothering with? Well, they figured to remove St. Landry from the 13th district and put it in the 15th. No. You owe it to the boys, Huey. Poppy, the enemies that make you and your friends that break you. Judicial election in 1908. Harvey been charged with Negro blood. That might be useful. No, I knew about that. Nobody believed it. Besides, we need the black vote in the north. No, I think there's some way to get rid of power. Let me think on it. Senator? Yeah? Governor Allen sent me here to escort you to New Orleans. Oscar did that? Yeah, well, it's thoughtful. Well, there's been a lot of wild talk about this session of the legislature. A lot of people are pretty riled up. The governor just wanted to head off any possible problems. Everybody wants to kill a kingfish. Lead on, Captain. Lead on. Okay. Get some of the boys to draw up a bill removing St. Landry Parish from the 13th District. Put it in the 15th. We're saving the 15th, ain't we? We're saving. We got Acadia, Lafayette, and Vermillion in the 15th. <laughs> Two incumbent judges. Now they have one hell of a time getting elected in the 15th. Although I do think it's using a sledgehammer to crush an ant. What the hell are all those police doing here? Safety precautions, Kingfish. The hell, they ain't gonna kill me in Baton Rouge. Another thing, I gotta pick me another governor for the next four years. Who you think? Burnett, Helander, Lesh. They ain't gonna find me another like Oscar. Oscar signed anything. Story is, a uh, leaf flew in the window of Oscar's office one day, and he dipped his pen and he signed it. <laughs> Go ahead, Seymour. I gotta talk to you about the income tax thing, you know what this is all about, don't you? Huh? Well, you take all the stuff back to New Orleans with you and fill out the forms, then bring the whole thing back here on Monday or Tuesday, and I'll sign the damn papers, and we'll be rid of them. I'm not even going to wait here till the end of the session. I'll leave here Tuesday, maybe even tomorrow, right after the House passes the bills. Then come down to New Orleans and sign them there. Then you know what we're going to do? We'll go on a vacation together, JR. Just you and me, no bodyguards and nothing. We'll get in your car, we'll go wherever we want to go without planning one single slivery plan in advance. Get up, Oscar. 
Doctor, I got a phone call to make. There's a kingfish, honey. Give me Joe Robinson in Washington. Yeah, yeah, Joseph Robinson, Majority Leader, U.S. Senate, Washington, D.C. You'll find it under U.S. government. Gee. Where'd you get her, Oscar? Pearl's place? You know what he's doing, Roosevelt? He's sending down a whole host of IRS men to investigate me and you and everybody else who ever said hello to Huey P. Long. So get your affairs in order, gentlemen, and prepare for an invasion. As you know, the purpose of this meeting is to consider the bills to be introduced. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Williams. I want to remind the chair that a United States senator has no authority in the legislature of the sovereign state of Louisiana. Remind all you want, Jack. I'm here. I ain't going nowhere. Now, let's get down to this. Did you ever hear the Constitution of this state? Damn it, Williamson! I am the Constitution of this state! I'll tell you about this bill number one. Rearranges the 13th, 15th districts, separates St. Landry and Evangeline parishes. And puts St. Landry Parish in the judicial district with Acadia Lafayette. So as to gerrymander Judge Parvey out of office. Judge Parvey and District Attorney Garland will retain their status until 1937. Then when it comes time to run, they go into a new district. Did the people of the district request this change be made? Yes, yes, call the question. Question. Aye. Aye. The committee will now move into the next measure. House Bill number two. Provide for one judge instead of two East Baton Rouge. One judge is enough for East Baton Rouge Parish. Judge Favreau was ill for years before he died. One judge presiding over court that time. Besides, this move will save money. Now, I'm here to explain these bills in case there's someone here who wishes to be heard in opposition. I would. There is. Call a question. Question. Aye. Aye. I have an amendment. Let me see it. No, we don't want this amendment. This is a kingfish. Send some food up here. Nobody's eating around here for days. Well, open it up. Damn it, we ain't got time to wait no cafeteria line. And listen, give me Judge Lash in New Orleans. I don't have a number. Find it. Why don't you just drop him a note, Huey? Oscar. Never write what you can phone, never phone what you can talk head and head, never talk what you can nod, never nod what you can wink, never wink what you can look. That's rule number two. What's number one? Never question the kingfish. Kingfish here? Yeah, put him on. Hello, Dick. What the hell is your religion? Why? You're going to be the next Democratic candidate for governor. But some of the boys up here say I couldn't run you because you're a Catholic. And it's too tough to swing North Louisiana's votes to a Catholic. Well, I was born a Catholic. You didn't run out on them, did you? No, I became a Presbyterian. Yeah. You know, when I was a boy, I would get up at 6 o'clock in the morning on Sunday and hitch our old horse to the buggy and take my Catholic grandparents to Mass. And I'd bring them home, and at 10 o'clock, I would hitch the old horse up again and take my Baptist grandparents to church. <laughs> yeah. All right, listen, we'll be talking on that, yeah? All right, bye-bye. Well, here you've been holding that on us. I didn't know your grandparents was Catholic. Don't be a fool, Oscar. We never even had a horse. Now, where the hell's that fool? House will be in order. House will be in order. We're here to consider the 39 bills approved this morning by the House Ways and Means right. Committee. How you doing, Emory? Sir, we'll Joe? The first bill. How are those cane holes holding up? Right. You let me know they don't. Chris, you take care of my school? Table? I remember it. Is that a motion to table? When you bringing those strawberries over down? Table the house. Well, you make it soon. Come on now. Wake up, George. Vote is three yay, 36 nay, the motion to table has been defeated. The clerk will read the second bill. How you doing, Huey? The clerk will commence reading the second bill. How'd you like to be the next governor of Louisiana? Well, I, I'd like that fine, Kingfish. We gotta carry the southern parishes, you know. Oh, we're gonna do that anyway. And you're the one to keep the boys honest here. I'll try, Huey. I'll try. We'll talk on Information collection of the charge by the official who collects the general taxes assessed against real property. Huey, I've got a store here that gravel in Louisiana is costing $2 a ton, whereas in other states the going rate's only 67 cents. My administration built 10 times the miles of highways that existed before Huey Long took office. We got the roads in Louisiana. In other states, they only got the grass. Well, but Huey, did you uh, hear about that hurricane in Florida? Oh. Over 100 soldiers died fighting the floods. Any comment? Sure. Roosevelt must be very happy. 
Every soldier killed in it. There's one less vote against him. Oh, can I quote that? Why the hell do you think I said it? Huey, what's this animus between you and the president? Oh, Roosevelt thinks I'm one of the two most dangerous men in the country. The other being Douglas MacArthur. I resent the company more than the allegation. Be sure you quote that correctly. But I don't understand. You were one of Roosevelt's biggest supporters. Mm -hmm. You helped him get nominated. I'm too popular, don't you see? Look around you here. It's the same in the U.S. Senate. People proud to hear Huey Long. Oh, I know. Roosevelt claims I'm some kind of fascist. Truth of it is, and he knows it, that I represent the people of this country. I am the United States. Madam, where is that? Get the boys out early in the morning and have them all here. Find them all now, because we might need the votes. Huey. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Almost there. Yeah. Everything's going to be fine. Can you hear me, Huey? Everything that can be done to help you is being done. But no one can say how things might turn out. Now is the time for you to tell me where you put the papers and things you took out of the bank vault. The deduct box. Where did you put it? Huey, it's important to the campaign, to the ticket. Huey, Huey, the deduct box. Where did you put it? Huey. 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 The data box. The data box. Huey. The data box. Huey. It's important to the campaign, to the ticket. <laughs> 